Thank you for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Going Nuts. I'm Katie, and as usual, I'm joined today by Elizabeth and Beth to tell us about their recipes. So Elizabeth, tell us what you chose today. I sure will. So recently, uh, I got a cookbook in on hold. I was looking forward to uh, Bad Manners, Brave New Meals. Um, this, uh, you might have um, heard of this, um, I don't know what you call it, company, I guess, before, formerly known as Thug Kitchen, but now Bad Manners Food. And they do all vegan dishes. Um, I'm not vegan myself, but I do love veggies and I like cooking vegan often. Um, so I've cooked a few things from here, but one of the things that I cooked was pistachio herb rice. And this is a side dish um, that I made to take over to a friend's house for dinner. Um, it's very, very easy. Um, basically, um, it does ask for saffron, which can be pricey, but um, you don't use that much of it. So I would recommend it because that really did add flavor and color to this. So basically you bloom a pinch of saffron threads in warm water. Uh, while you're doing that, you take a, a pot with a lid, put a little oil in it and saute some white rice just to get it a little bit of that nutty flavor. And then you add um, in some water, reduce the heat to low and let the rice cook until it's done and it's all the water is absorbed and it's fluffy. And then you kind of just let it sit for about 10 minutes. Then you pour the saffron water kind of in stripes over the rice so that some of the rice gets kind of that bright yellow color that if you're familiar with saffron um, is what it gives and some of it stays white. And then you cover again and let it sit for another like five to 10 minutes. Then you scoop it into a bowl and you fluff it. And it's kind of looks really cool because there's, again, some of the rice is this really bright yellow and some is, has remained um, white. And then you toss in some dried cherries and you toss in some um, chopped fresh herbs. So it calls for dill, tarragon, cilantro, and or mint. Um, I end up using dill and cilantro because those are my preferences of those herbs. And then where the nuts finally come in, you dump in three quarters of a cup of chopped pistachios on top, and then you squeeze lemon juice uh, over it all. It was really good. I feel like um, cooking with pistachios, maybe this is just me, but it seems somewhat new to me because I feel like they just invented like five to 10 years ago, the pre-shelled pistachios that you can get at the grocery store. So like before that you had to shell them. So I remember very occasionally for the holidays, my mom would make like pistachio cookies, but we would all be like sitting at the kitchen counter, like shelling the pistachios. Maybe this is just me, but I do not remember those like pre-shelled ones previously. So now that they have those, um, it's been a lot easier and I love pistachios. And um, this was really flavorful, a great side dish. It looked um, exactly like this picture like that is literally what mine looked like I feel horrible because I didn't take a photo because I brought it to a friend's house and then we started eating and I was <laughs> forgot um but it looked like that and I would absolutely make it again it was fresh it was a great side dish I also think you could probably top it with some kind of meat and it would be a full meal if you wanted um easy loved it would recommend very nice that sounds great I'm not, I, I don't have uh, saffron at the moment. And there was something that I was looking at that called for, and I was like, I don't know. I, I guess I'm not opposed to just a tiny bit of it. And we have the place that you can get it. Um, so do you think it will really make a difference? So in the, they actually say in the recipe, like they say saffron can be expensive. So if you don't want to buy it, don't stress it. The mm -hmm. dish can go without it. Um, I thought it added, like I could taste the flavor, but I also think it would be 
fine without it. You know, it just wouldn't have the color and it wouldn't have that kind of unique flavor. But they even say that you could totally do without it. So you could. I wonder if you could just put a little turmeric in it or would that change the flavor? Right, right. I mean, it might change it a little, but it would add that color and yeah. a little bit of that spice. So yeah, sounds good. Yeah, that sounds amazing. And I think it's really funny because I actually have saffron rice to make this weekend. I was planning on it and the recipe that I have is very simple. I do have saffron, but I also have a giant bag of shelled pistachios and dried cherries. So I think that I might switch it up and go ahead and make this recipe instead of the one that I planned on. Cause that sounds just really wonderful, tasty with all the different textures. And also, like you said, really beautiful. So that is an exciting recipe. I'm looking forward to it. Cool. Yeah, it was good. And like you said, Katie, the textures were really, you know, the crunch of the pistachio because they do stay crunchy because you add them at the end. So that's good. All right, Beth, what did you make? Okay. Well, you guys, I made uh, peanut butter cookies and they're not just any peanut butter cookie because they're the peanut butter cookies from the uh, Cooks Illustrated. Well, I don't have uh, from two th- May, June, 2019 that I just happened to check out so, like many, gosh, a couple months ago. And they really break down how to make chewy peanut butter cookies. Like, as my husband said, they mansplain everything. This, and then he, he really liked this uh, magazine and he ended up uh, subscribing to it. Um, so they broke it down the science as, you know, like how much what are the ratios of the of uh, fat to flour and butter and the, um, and this recipe was also repeated in the January February 2021 uh, issue in an article about cooking with butter which I happened to get so it's it's available but you cannot get it online but anyway well how do they make it perfect in their opinion and it is a she who mansplains it but um. Uh, it's bend, more bendy, they say. Okay. Look at how bendy it is. Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> and then crunchy on the outside. It's a, so I don't have to show any pictures. <laughs> the main, um, yeah, also in this article is the history of the crosshatch, sorry, on the cookie. Um, these don't need a fork and they won't work with a fork crosshatch to use your fingers because it's softer uh, dough. Um, so they, it wouldn't maintain the crosshatch in it anyway, which so that's, they don't have them in it. And don't they look just like perfect bakery cookies? Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited to, um, to share it with you. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with them. Oh, one other thing about this. Um, they are real specific about weighing your ingredients, which I did not do. I just, so, um, and it still worked out. I knew it wasn't going to screw anything up. The other thing is it called for two tablespoons of honey. Um, babies can't have honey. And I wanted to make sure my little granddaughter could have one of these. So even baked, you can't, they can't have it. So I omitted that. I put a little squeeze of agave syrup in it. Or not, you know, um, it. I don't think it, it's it's still perfect. So that's my recipe that I that I gleaned from Cooks Illustrated. Beth, do you use um, like crunchy peanut butter, or did you use full peanuts, or what? What did it call oh, for? So they're very specific too about it being creamy peanut butter, not natural peanut butter. They use Skippy. I use Jif, and. Um, uh, you do use a half, uh, a half a cup of dry roasted peanuts that you chop fine. Uh, although I didn't, some of, there were some chunks in it because uh, I did it just with a knife. And that's fine. It just gives it a little texture. So, so yeah. And then it's also just brown sugar. It's not uh, white sugar. Looks great. Sounds great. I yeah. love peanut butter cookies. Oh, good. You'll love these. All right, well, Katie, let's find out what you made this week. All right, let's see. The recipe that I am sharing with you today is a flourless walnut cake. 
And this is by Eleanor Ozich. I actually found this recipe in the New Zealand Herald. I forget what I was looking for, how I ended up there, but I'm really glad that I did because this recipe is amazing. Um, it's actually only got three main ingredients, uh, which is probably why I tried it in the first place because I see stuff like this and I'm like, this is not gonna work. But then my curious brain has to try it. And in some cases it does actually work out like this. So the ingredients are three and a half cups of walnuts, four large eggs, and a cup of Rapidura coconut or Muscovado sugar. I've never used Rapidura or Muscovado sugar, but I always have coconut sugar in my pantry. So that's what I used. Um, so it's really simple. You just process the walnuts for a minute or two in your food processor until they resemble kind of like a flour. Um, then you mix in the eggs and the sugar and that's your batter. And you just pour it into either a greased or parchment lined cake tin and you just bake it for 30 to 40 minutes until it's golden brown on top or, uh, or and it like springs back when you touch it. And you cool it for 15 minutes or so. And then they have some suggestions on how you can top it. Uh, they suggest dusting it with coconut flour or icing sugar. They also um, mentioned maybe a, zesting it with lemon. Um, the first time that I made this, I actually intended to just leave it plain and just have it on its own, but it was cooling on the counter and my husband walked by and he was like, where's the frosting? So <laughs> I decided to whip up a little bit of cream cheese frosting and because uh, I had all the stuff and put that just lightly on top. And that was really good. I liked that a lot, but I thought that I could improve it a little bit so, so using this other technique that I'd seen in the past. So I made it again. And this time I went for a strawberry topping. So what I did was take a cup of strawberries and you just mash them up until you've got sort of like the strawberry mush and then just drain off any excess liquid and you spread the strawberry mash on top of your cake and then slice up some more strawberries and you just set the sliced strawberries on top of the mash and it actually sticks to the cake pretty well. And it looks really beautiful. I think especially once you slice the cake, the I took several pictures, so I'll show some, but I think, I think the sliced cake really looks super impressive and it's so, easy and the strawberry flavor with the walnut flavor that combination I think is really really excellent so that's how I'll, I'll keep doing this cake like that and um yeah it's really really simple and I hope you guys give it a try because it's tasty as well yeah that sounds good and simple yeah, yeah. I don't have that kind of sugar though yeah, you you might need to get a special kind of sugar. I'm not sure how it would work with like a, a white or brown sugar. You certainly could give it a try, uh, but coconut sugar is pretty easy to come by. I think um, if you can't get it at the regular grocery store, definitely Whole Foods or like Arbor Farms will have it. Okay. I just like am fascinated by this whole recipe. Three ingredients. So the walnuts kind of basically act as the flour, mm -hmm. essentially, the, because they're ground up. And then I guess that is, and so is, it, is it quite dense? Yeah. So okay. thanks for asking that. I meant to say that it is a quite dense cake. So that, that sort of makes it different than regular cake. And then also that it's not very sweet. So it's a dense sort of like mild flavor cake. Um, so it's a little bit different than regular cake, but I thought it was really good. And Which you, sounds great. Yeah. yeah. Is it like a, would you call it like a coffee cake as a, or like, yeah, Actually, when would you In it? my experience, coffee cakes would be even lighter than okay. this. Yeah. I've never ever actually really had a cake quite like this one. Okay. Okay. Cool. Wow. Yeah. That's so interesting. I New love it. And it's gluten free too, so yeah, yeah I could, I could make it for somebody I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, all right. With that, we thank you all for watching Recipe Share, and be sure to click click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about and to share your own in the comments. Join us next time when we'll be talking about cheap 
quick and easy recipes. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share, share a little recipe.